we'll move straight into into Ben's session, which is about applying the TOGAF standard to agile development at Shell. Um, so it's a pleasure to introduce uh, Ben Heidefeld in his second year of returning to Shell, where he earlier set up enterprise architecture for the exploration and production areas between 2007 and 2008. So without further ado, a warm welcome from the open group, please, to uh, Ben Heidefeld. Welcome, Ben. Over to you. Welcome, everybody. Um, uh, I'm actually a uh, Master of Science and not a doctor. Um, I studied theoretical physics uh, in Utrecht in the Netherlands. But uh, as so many people, immediately after studying, I went into IT. So I started in IT in 1997. Uh, and uh, I had uh, uh, multiple engagements. So let me... As I was introduced, this is about how to use the open group architecture framework in a situation where your development is dominated by agile development. Um, because we all know that uh, uh, TOGAF has been conceived as a waterfall approach uh, to creating architecture. Um, so let me start with that right off the bat. Um, you can develop architecture in a waterfall approach and then insert that uh, architecture that you developed in a waterfall approach into an agile uh, project. But that, of course, is suboptimal. I also happen to know uh, that uh, uh, the Open Group is working on an agile version of TOGAF. Um, expect that to come out over next year somewhere. Okay, let me start to tell you a little bit about Shell. Shell is a large IT shop. Uh, they're running about 10,000 applications and even more deployments of applications because some applications are only deployed once and others multiple times. There are 400 architects, few over 400 architects worldwide in the US, London, Amsterdam, um, The Hague, um, uh, and also in Bangalore. And um, that's a huge practice. Actually, um, the most architects we have are working out of Bangalore. Um, our development is a combination of waterfall and agile DevOps, with the trend being that uh, agile is, is quickly winning out, um, not only for development of new applications, basically bespoke software development, but also for, uh, let's, see, let's say, your uh, classical uh, SAP configuration implementation. That's also more and more done in an agile way. So <clears throat> we are divided according to TOGAF terms in segments. Segments uh, have a certain interest from a line of business. Uh, we have uh, oil and gas, but uh, many more things. And Shell is diversifying strongly into uh, renewable energy. Um, already some years ago, we chose TOGAF as our architecture framework. And we are already working according to TOGAF for some years now. Uh, we have just over this year changed our architecture uh, modeling tool to Archimate, uh, coming out of a system architect uh, by uh, uh, IBM. Um, so, um, we have a cloud unless policy, so we prefer cloud deployment and also market standard unless. So we use commercial off the shelf applications like SAP and Salesforce and create a lot of applications using those platforms. However, we also have many niches, including high performance computing, because um, in the oil and gas business, you basically cause earth tremors by explosions either in the water or on the land and 
uh, those give uh, reflections from the various uh, layers of Earth. It's called seismic. And that's basically the way that uh, the oil and gas industry is trying to look what is on the ground, trying to see certain structures that are strong indicators for finding uh, hydrocarbons, oil and gas. Uh, we have strongly value-driven architecture. So we don't want the best architecture, but we basically want an architecture that will take us over um, the uh, lifespan of the application. <clears throat> so that takes us all the way, starting from requirements, gathering to decommissioning of applications, which also happens all the time, as you can probably imagine with so many applications running. Going into Agile. Now, I've been in Agile software development um, in, from the beginning, from the 90s. And uh, I was part of the start of DSDM, uh, Dynamic System uh, Development Methods, and of Capgemini's uh, Iterative Application Development. So I'm basically there from the get-go. And Agile software development is a way to solve the problem to basically uh, make sure that uh, you solve the problem that it's hard to specify for the business what kind of system they need because specification is hard. And by doing sessions uh, with uh, these customers, uh, you can basically find out exactly what you need to build. Um, so Agile is not primarily an architecture development uh, method uh, because it is a software development method uh, and it uses architecture to basically realize what it needs to do. There's um, methods like SAFE, um, a Scalable Architecture Framework, and uh, but Shell already chose TOGAF. And because TOGAF is also going into Agile, we will stay with TOGAF. And this presentation basically is about how to use TOGAF um, in an Agile way. And we basically uh, uh, find that it is possible uh, to do just enough architecture just in time. So this is, of course, uh, unread unreadably slow, but this is basically mapping all of the TOGAF deliverables um, that are in the architecture contract over the run period of your project. And this is a waterfall project. Here at the stage gate number two, but let me go to the next slide where it is a little bit more zoomed in. At the stage gate two is normally where we deliver the architecture and the developers take over. However, also for a waterfall project, we are now mandating that architects stay involved from the beginning to the end. But in a waterfall project, you see that the architecture uh, deliverables are uh, much more developed uh, than we will see in Agile. So uh, a red uh, means that this architecture deliverable, the application migration diagram, is just being sketched uh, before you basically uh, start development. Uh, others. Other deliverables are totally made final, like the strategy capability matrix or the organization decomposition diagram or for application development, uh, the application function matrix or the application user location diagram, etc. It's all here, you can read it for yourself. So um, that means that the architecture deliverables are much farther along by the time you hit development, and you will still have to mature uh, some uh, deliverables, like for instance, software engineering, but many deliverables are already ready to go, or as you can see here, because this in the right here only lists the deliverables that are not yet finalized, because the green ones that are green here are finalized in this phase, 
and they are not mentioned anymore here. So this is just the deliverables that are not finalized here, and they are then finalized during the design stage with a few exceptions of further deployment. So this is what we had, what we have been doing uh, using TOGAF deliverables already for, uh, let's say, the last uh, three years at Shell. And now we need to cater to Agile because more and more development is happening in Agile mode. So let me take you through the next slide. So um, we see that the business need is basically being framed. Uh, the technology stack, however, must still be chosen. And that is important. We um, um, you basically have to start delivering your architecture before the team comes on board because the architect needs to select the software development stack. And only after you have chosen the software development stack, like are you going to do bespoke uh, development in Java or are you going to run um, an, an SAP application that requires a lot of knowledge about how to configure SAP that will require totally different people. So let me take you into the <clears throat> Agile project mapping. Uh, what we do here is basically starting out uh, the same way. Uh, we start all of the deliverables. And in the phase before the team comes on board, we finalize some. But as you uh, can perhaps see, uh, the other deliverables are much less finalized. Many are only sketched, or they are in draft, or they are a bit further on, uh, that they are already reviewable. That's especially the case for the segment architects that has, uh, let's say, 10 solution architects working for him covering a whole segment. So those deliverables are already in a reviewable state, but not mature yet. And other deliverables, uh, as soon as you go through the initial architecture development phase, can be taken all the way to the point that they are mature. That does not mean they are final, but they are certainly mature. They are beyond um, uh, the stage that they have been reviewed. However, most of the deliverables, the TOGAF standard deliverables, are still immature. They are in sketch, draft, sketch or draft. So then, after choosing the technology stack, so okay, we have determined we're going to develop this bespoke, as a bespoke application development using Java developers. A team of Java experienced uh, uh, agile developers in Java will be onboarded. And then basically you start to socialize your architecture. And uh, bringing these uh, TOGAF uh, deliverables into a more mature state helps you also to get buy-in from the agile team uh, that, is ex uh, that basically is uh, expecting to work uh, more independently than during a waterfall uh, project. So you basically need to entice their attention. You need to involve them in the architecture decisions and to basically ripen uh, the architectural deliverables uh, with them. And uh, as you can see, uh, certain uh, deliverables can be in the first sprints be finalized or to make mature like the application and data matrix and the data dissemination diagram. But the logical diagram will only be finalized for the first modules that are being deployed uh, because we're doing execute sprints, execute of sprints, and we are doing deploying in Agile. Every two weeks or every four weeks, we uh, try to get to a deployment and uh, demonstrate that uh, to the business and get the feedback from the business. So that is basically the core of this presentation. Um, so uh, do not develop 
all your deliverables in your architecture already to the hilt that they are basically fixed. Um, take um, take a, uh, a more sketchy development of your um, deliverable into uh, the uh, design when the team is onboarded. And um, the, the, the advantage the advantages are huge. You get much more buy-in and actually you, you become one of the team. You are not one of the developers, but you basically uh, touch base with the team on a weekly basis on their, uh, uh, their, their sprint reviews, of course, but also uh, uh, when, when they are pokering, uh, uh, doing the sprint planning. And also when you basically do a deep dive on a certain technology issue, then basically you want to be with her, you want to explain something, they will explain something back to you, and you will change your architecture deliverables for especially uh, the software engineering diagram will strongly change um, uh, module by module as they are uh, being delivered. So, um, I basically, uh, what I wanted to say, this is what I, what I wanted to say. Um, we, we want to give uh, enough architecture guidance that uh, the team will not lose uh, uh, sight of the guardrails of architecture. However, we don't want to crush their creativity. And actually, I find that an agile development team focuses mostly on what they need to build, what functionality, and they feel greatly helped when the architecture is already uh, there, that they don't need to worry about the architecture, that there's somebody working with their team to basically explain how functionality is to be built and that makes sure that all of the uh, formalities and, 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 and the, the permits are being taken care that you also are basically a snow scoop that is uh, um, uh, making sure that uh, they can just uh, develop functionality. And with that, I would like to open the Q and A. Thank you, Ben. Thank you. That 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 was great, and it's uh, it's great to start off with such a such a clear message that you can use uh, Turgef in an agile way. It's something. We've been saying, but uh, uh, it sometimes takes a while for that message to get through. But it's uh, it's nice to see you uh, actually with some charts that help us uh, help us demonstrate that. So fantastic, thank you. Um, so we have some uh, questions. I know you're you're uh, you're up again, Ben. But um, uh, tell me, uh, tell me. Uh, okay, perfect. So. Uh, let, let, let me get to these. There's sort of grouping of, of questions, um, I guess, which is around the the use of architects in agile teams. So if I if I group two together, what is your allocation of architects to agile teams? And um, do you have layered architects with some acting at the solution level and some overseeing the enterprise architecture? Yeah, let me start with the second part. Uh, uh -huh. Shell has many architects. We have the segment architects that overview all applications support. So I think we just, I think we just lost Ben. Um, while I wait to see if uh, it, if Ben comes back, um, we've got uh, a, a number of um, uh, a number of questions coming in which are on this occasion all to do with, um, <laughs> yes, the person who asked that question that he was just starting to answer is, uh, is uh, feeling, uh, feeling poor timing for Ben dropping off. But um, I think what, we've, what, what we're seeing um, is uh, this, this, this big topic of, or, or regular topic of, of enterprise architecture, uh, different architecture domains, agile, how do they all relate to each other? And there are different approaches to doing that. And uh, you heard earlier before the, the break in the first session about, about one of those, which is our OAA or Open Agile Architecture Standard, um, which is uh, 
which is a great addition to the to effectively to the to the toolkit or the toolbox, whatever you want to call it, of the uh, of the architect. And of course, we've got the the let's call it more traditional approaches of uh, of architecture, um, very widely used, such as the um, Toga framework. So, um, what uh, ben noted at the beginning of his talk was that we are uh, the the architecture forum of the open group, which is the group that uh, uh, that evolves and uh, maintains the standard. Um, they have been working hard on um, uh, some agile content for uh, a a future version of the standard. So um, we're going to uh, the the goal is to be able to give architects. Uh, lots of different choices on the approaches that they take, the frameworks that they use, um, the standards they use, the tools they use um, along the way, so that uh, depending on the environment that they're in, they uh, they can uh, use those which make most sense. So, um, and Ben talked about uh, Shell switching to using uh, Archimate as its um, modeling language. That's another. Many of you will know this, but uh, Archimate is another standard from the Open Group, um, a modeling language standard, which is great for doing enterprise architecture. Um, it works very, very nicely, complementary to anyone who's using the TOGAF standard too. A lot of the terminology is very similar and in increasingly, increasingly so over the years. So there are, there are, as I as I would say, and you, you can see this on the Open Group website. There are a lot of um, a lot, essentially a lot of tools in the toolkit um, for enterprise architects to use. So um, do take a look at them. Um, it looks unfortunately as though we just lost Ben at the, uh, at the crucial moment of answering questions. 